Okay, hello folks. Welcome back to Pushing the Boundaries. Make it a great day, okay? <laughs> Not have a great day, he's laughing already. Not have a great day, make it a great day. And they're different, okay? Because I, I read it a is. post on this from, from Jason. He's on. They are very, very different, but people don't see them as different. And, you know, one, you bounce out of bed and you take control of your day, right? Mm -hmm. The second is that you bounce out of bed and you let your door, you crawl out of bed or fall out of bed, and the day takes control of you. Yeah. And they're so different. And what, what day would you rather have, Jason? I would rather make it a great day. I choose, you know what, the day might stink ultimately at the end, but I've done the things that I can do to make it happen. Yeah. Really, really quick story is uh, something I started doing that I never did. And I've been really big into following like military leaders and lessons learned from SEALs and in military process. And it's something as simple as making the bed because you've done something to move the ball forward or create order around your day. And yeah. that's exercising in the morning. And then those things is like, even if the rest of the day gets blown up, you've at least got to win. Oh, absolutely. Chip, 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 marginal gains. Well, that's fantastic. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, from, from following you, uh, you know, qu quite closely, uh, um, it's sort of has the heartbeat really of, of the strategy Titan stuff, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, really that, that kind of, for me, very inspirational. I'm sure his wife won't say this, by the way. Um, but <laughs> well, she might. She yeah. might. Maybe get her. Is she there? Well, that's no, no. Um, <laughs> that could go horribly wrong. We definitely would have to cut that away. Um, but uh, Jason, I'm not wrong. All right. And thousands of your followers are not wrong. And, you. you know, yeah, no, 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 no. It's, it's genuinely true. And, you know, I think you're, I've got a remarkable way of engaging. And, you know, you see a lot of people that will just churn out you know, textbook stuff, all right? Sure. So you see yeah. it, and I, it, it, it's like, all right. Okay, mm -hmm. I just sort of ignore, ignore, ignore. Yeah. Because, I mean, I've seen it all before, but what you do, you convert it, you know? You practical, pragmatic, innovative, uh, mm -hmm. and I think that is the gift that your customers, I'm sure they're, they're getting. Um, mm -hmm. Also, people like me who uh, like, like to see what you're doing. So... It's a success in my view, and I'm sure a lot of people will, will agree with that. Thank um, you very much. I, I, I appreciate sure that. That means a lot, actually, because, you know, it's um sometimes you put things out there. And as you had said, um, you know, on a platform like LinkedIn, when you put something yeah. out, there's kind of some stuff that's formulaic. -like. It's uh, maybe, you know, I know with what I put out, it's a lot of times it's a risk because you're taking a position on something and you don't want to yeah. blend in with the crowd. You want to stand out. And that's where I think all of us, any of us can do that is take your lens of the world and yeah. present your take on it. A lot of mine is based off yeah. of my athletic endeavors um, where yeah. like it, it was just incremental every single day, a little bit better, a little bit. Yeah. And it wasn't the theory. I was living it for over a decade where you, you know, I, I wasn't world-class, but I was aspiring to be a world-class sprinter. And at that level, <sighs> you will work, you will work months to take a hundredth, two hundredth of a second off. You know, when you first start, you get the big chunks. You yeah, that, but any world class athlete will tell you those incremental gains at that level requires a focus, yeah. sustained vision of yeah. that's where I want to go. And guess what? I know it's going to be a yeah. I know it's going to be a slog, but I want to achieve that goal. <laughs> and so it's just trying to translate those ideas that listen. We all have visions on where we want to yeah. go. We all have visions I, on what I, we want to do. Just set the vision and then just execute, 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 yeah. execute reassess sorry monologuing a bit but yeah yeah no and you could learn a lot from that that's uh that, that again that sporting world uh how business works and translating those things into it and you know that's the power of translating stuff isn't it and i gotta ask so what sprinter what was your 100 meter time jason come on give it to the world oh, it was uh 1061 electronics oh. or like 10 37 ish hand time um serious I think that was my sophomore year. So I, I can't yeah. remember anymore. No, it was my it was my sophomore year. Um, yeah, it was great. It was one of those where yeah. you know, for the funny thing is, it was a really funny story. That was a PR for me, uh, and yeah. in that race, I think I got fourth or fifth. Uh, the guys I was running against <laughs> were Olympic alternates. Um, like you know, you say boat or something like that. Was it true? Or? True world class. <laughs> and, the, and the reason why I share that is. Uh, it was a very, very early story uh, of how um, humbling, regardless of how good you think you are, can be extremely yeah. humbling when you go against real, like real 
talent and you realize I'm not really that good. It was a very valuable lesson to learn at a young age. Yeah, absolutely right. And but okay, so I I I reckon I got a bit of a chance that well, if you come to the UK, all right, if I go back to the States <laughs> when we can, I, I got proper do a proper challenge race, all right, but I can do it now because I reckon I can beat your time. <laughs> I, I kid you not, all right. I, I love kid it. you know, I think I think on your show I did a massive leg kick and injured myself, and uh, they'll have to watch the podcast on Transformation Nation, I think, for that one. But I think I can give it a go, all right? So I'm going to time myself. I've, I've got a running watch that's going to do my time. Love it. I'm going to give it a bit of a go, and I'm going to going to get you to sort of say, well, oh, do you know what? Forget it. Forget your career in sprinting, or, or you should be you're doing the wrong job. Go to do some sprinting. All right. Are you ready for this? Do it, man. Okay. Have you ever, have you ever had this done before? No, I'm very intrigued on how this is going to go. Don't hurt yourself. Good form, good form. Front side mechanics. Yep. Oh, top speed phase, man. Keep yeah. it going. Keep it oh. going. Hey, okay. Oh. Okay, well, hold on a minute. 10-4. I think that was 10-4. I think you beat me. No, oh, do you know what? Is <laughs> that 11 seconds? Come on. <laughs> That's a respectable time. That's good. It's still a lose, buddy. It's still a lose. <laughs> I think. I think that to be fair, I think you had a headwind there. I think you had a, if it. was neutral conditions. I think you would have beat yeah. me. Oh, so you had a lack of lack of headwear, uh, head head hair wind. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if they'll keep all this stuff in. I have no idea, buddy. But you know. Hey ho, hey ho. How's right. the uh, How's the heart rate? What are you, what are you at? What oh yeah, at? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll check it actually. Um, so uh currently oh, man, 90 well 99 beats per minute at the moment yeah 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 and, you, know, that's okay, thing, you, know. you know that's the thing actually is funny that uh people don't don't yeah. realize is that at the end of a 100 meter race you're actually your heart rate's yeah. not really that high you don't have enough time yeah. to really get it up high and and this is where i i, yeah. I uh, tell people a lot of times again the parallels of sport and other life lessons to things in life is that uh, you know my focus is uh, extreme focus intense yeah. execution and it's like all right we're going on this and it's just hammer it. and then we move on to the next thing and, and again a lot of that is born from the idea yeah. that like in sprinting in sprinting when you sprint we didn't run more than probably 400 meters in a workout but it was yeah. maximal effort 100 percent effort and the reason why is when you do that you cannot sustain high level fast performance for a long time it's just not possible the life yeah. lesson the translation in, in when I talk to other people is the same thing is like you need to determine what kind of race are you running? Are you running a marathon? Are you running a sprint? Because like for us, we're sprinting constantly. And what that mandates is that we are yeah. intensely focused. You execute on it and then you move and then you rest, you move away. But then the thing is, is that you can have a couple different things that are up and then you execute, you execute, you execute. And that execution piece you'll hear me talk to again and again, because that's where the magic happens is that, yeah. We all have ideas. We all have things, but it's our focus. It really, at its core, comes down to focus. And yeah. what are we going to focus our energy on? And, and just to get back to the thing is that if you do that correctly, you can actually get very significant results with far less yeah. energy spent in aggregate than if you're yeah. spreading yourself all over the place with no focus. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. I mean, I hear it so many times, failure to execute, failure to execute. And again, it's a skill set, isn't it? It's a discipline and a skill set you learn. And, you know, again, mm -hmm. you, you do that so well. So where, where does it all start then, Jay? So uh, analytics, you know, you obviously you do a lot around that. Where, where did it all start for you? Yeah, so for us, really, uh, for me, it got, uh, it, it started out just getting involved in, you know, typical business roles and supply chain. And and the cliff note says that I found out at a very early yeah. age that, People with information can get into conversations that they normally wouldn't be, be invited to. A quick story. I started out at a, a Fortune 500 food, major brand in the United States, and a food company. And we, made, we made a bunch of products, and they, our supply chain, it was about cost management. So uh, we were always looking for cost savings. And long story short, I ended up finding these opportunities just by doing very fundamental analysis of, Hey, it looks like we've got like a million dollars here. We've got like a, like a half million dollars here. And I brought it to my boss. And he's like, how'd you find this? I go, I don't know. I was just looking at the data. Yeah. So he goes, okay, we have an executive meeting next week. All the major bigwigs are coming in. And so basically they're like, we want you to be in there to present this. And I'm like, I have no business being in there. I don't, I'm still figuring out where the bathroom's at. 
I, I, <laughs> I, I shouldn't be in that meeting. So they're like, no, we want you to be able to talk about how because we want the lessons learned about other ways that we can apply this across the business. Uh, so anyway, I get in this meeting and it's and now I laugh at it. But at the time, imagine you're a kid right out of school. I was three months out of school. I'm in there with executives of this organization, not like the division, but like the global executives, 20 people maybe. And they're listening to me talk. I I, I was so intimidated and so scared, but I'm like, why are they listening to me? I, I don't know anything, but they're like, no, it's what you found. And the reason why I like to share that story is because I realized then the power of information and that yeah. for a lot of organizations, they want to do better. Most companies want to grow. Most companies want to, to make things better or whatever it is, increase enterprise value. If you're a nonprofit, increase your reach, whatever it is. That's pretty much a universal goal, I would think, for most management teams. The thing is, is that there's a lot of ways to get there. And I am of the belief that for a lot of companies, they've been operating a certain way. We've kind of squeezed a lot of the available juice out of the, you know, that, that, that piece of fruit. Well, yeah. there's a whole other realm that might identify a lot of additional incremental and undiscovered opportunities, and that comes in the form of data and analytics. Uh, For yeah. a lot of companies, they don't have these skills. Uh, and, and this is the thing I think is in very important to mention. There are a lot of companies that do. But as you go across different industry segments, one of my favorites is manufacturing. Mm -hmm. the, the company size mixes is very mid-sized to small, and a lot of times they don't have these capabilities in-house. Mm -hmm. So it represents a lot of opportunity to help them achieve their overarching goal of making a better company, making you know, fulfilling whatever it is that their objective is. And basically, the way that I explain it is I'm so passionate about this because it's like if you're going on a fishing trip and you want to catch pike, let's say, Data and analytics can be the tool to help you tell you where to go, what bait to use, how far to drop it down, when to reel it up, and really in the end to give you a positive fishing experience. In the same way, if your goal is to build a better business, data and analytics can be an exceptionally potent way to find, identify, and execute upon opportunities that you might not even were aware of. And I say that because that's the majority of what my career has been based on is that very playbook right there. It's not that we were coming in and doing anything truly revolutionary like AI. It was, again, using my sports analogy, identifying where we wanted to go, identifying the opportunities, um, and then really saying, what is the magnitude of those opportunities? Let's commit resources to those and then ultimately execution. But when I walk people through a lot of yeah. the stuff that we do, it's not rocket science. It, it really is not, but it is immensely effective because most people can relate to it. They're like, I get that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, with digitalization, there's been so much data, source systems, uh, you know, uh, EPRs or case management systems or record managers, all of that stuff, all the mm -hmm. data has been going in. And do you know what? You know, a lot of people have been missing sort of the tricks and the fundamental clues that the organization's got that information and, and covering that like you said you yeah. know shining a light tin opening the organization in that way using data yeah it really is uh yeah you know, really is the, the right thing to do but the basics love it i love the fact that do you know what just get the basics right because yeah. uh, you know everything flows from that bit like your sporting analogies isn't it if you don't do the right things or you don't have the right technique you don't do the then then everything else you try as much effort as you, as you like but you're not going to get as fast as you need, need to be or could, could be isn't it so yeah, absolutely yeah. yeah and to your point yeah. that's where uh to use a sporting analogy 50 mm. per probably close to 50 percent of our time was spent on technique work and the yeah. reason why i say that these are things that on the surface they don't appear like they're going to make you run faster in any way, shape, or form. They're actually right. the very things that are going to make you go faster. And that's yeah. why, as we talk about these data and analytics capabilities and tying them into strategy, right? Not making the, this nebulous thing that's off in the sideline. It's like, no, start with where we want to go, what we're trying mm. to accomplish, and how can data mm. and analytics help with that? Because sometimes it might not make sense, but a lot of times it does. And I'll just give a quick story. There was a company I worked for yeah. where um, they did highly engineered products. They had all this quote data, all this quote data. And they had an objective to go and uh, grow revenue and EBITDA, earnings before income taxes, depreciation, and amortization. 
And so I'm looking at it. I'm in, my team's in charge of pricing. And I say, what have we done with that quote data? And they're like, oh, we've done nothing. I go, that's really valuable because what it's going to tell you is where's the market pricing at? What are you winning and losing with? Not only that, by product category, by channel, by customer size, whatever it is, all these different things. And then if we can take that, weaponize it essentially, and then bring it in and compare it against our pricing uh, content, pricing analytics, we can start to see, because what you see all the time, especially in pricing is like, oh, I can't compete at this price. I I need it to be here to to compete. And then it's like, well, actually all the data says we're winning quotes here. I'm going to deny this request. I'm going to approve it at this price. I've just given us 10 points of incremental margin and we yeah. still get the order. Now that that's an overly simplified example, but there, I can't tell you how many companies specifically in like those that make physical goods, manufacturing, you know, medical things like that, medical devices uh-huh. where it's freight price management, freight recovery terms, kind of all these things that aren't as sexy. Uh, they definitely fall more into the financial realm, like FP&A. Yeah. And so a lot of times what happens is you have this disconnect where FP&A and others think they have a, a nice tight grip on it. The reality is it's not an indictment on them, but they don't just because they have so many other obligations. And this is one of the ideas where, you know, specifically, I'm a big believer in that data and analytics can serve as a very potent extension of your FP&A group. Because now what you're doing is yeah. FP&A is kind of that central pillar to strategy and you know kind of the financial stability of an organization and finding those opportunities. Not only that, yeah. they're a very major component of deploying data and analytics tools. If you get finance yeah. on board, guess what? You're going to get everybody else on board real quick. And so yeah. anyway, I know I'm kind of sneaking all over, but to bring it back to the central theme yeah. of that, many organizations, I believe, have significant opportunity around these things. It just involves a different view because so many companies, I, I talk to companies all day that think they've got all this stuff tied up. And again, it's not an indictment on them. They're just too close yeah. to it. They can't see the opportunity. And that's the value yeah. of having, you know, uh, individuals like you or I or others to come and say, there's, there's a couple things that we can improve upon here. And they're good because they help them achieve their goals then, you know? Yeah. And, you know, that great, great example there, you, you, you just uh, gave uh, on the finance stuff. It be, so, what effectively you're doing, you're leading, I guess, uh, a data-driven culture, started to create that mindset where data is really valuable. It's a strategic asset. It's a critical asset, mission-critical asset. So yep. what kind of top tips, uh, Jason, would you give uh, to to the audience and your followers about creating data-driven cultures? Yeah, and this is, this is a tough one. My buddy jo- uh, Jordan Morrow and I talk about this a mm. lot, and the reason why it's tough is like, and I'll, I'll give context for that thought. Typically, when we're having these conversations, we are able to to impact in some capacity what is going to happen, or we are talking directly with leaders that are going to do this. Uh, so we have the ability to influence, and typically, if we're having those conversations, they're open mm-hmm. to the idea. Um, culture, a lot of times, comes down to ego, um, perceived power, all these things that we don't talk about in the data and analytics world, but in actuality, there that's actually where the rubber hits the road, in my experience. So it, I, I offer that as context for my comments to follow because culture change is difficult. But the first thing I'd say is one of the best ways that I have discovered to help bring people along, especially in leadership positions, is to have immense clarity on where your organization is trying to go. So if your goal is market share gain or revenue expansion, again, whatever your metric is, clearly understand what that is. The second part is what are the current strategies that you are looking to in the projects that are in the queue that you are looking at to help you get there? And the reason why that's really important is because we have finite resources, we have finite budgets, but we might look and say, you know what? And here's here's a real example of that. Um, you might have a revenue growth goal. Let's just make a number up, $10 million. Two ways, for simplicity's sake, there's two ways that you can do that. One, you can go out and get new business. Two, you can optimize your current portfolio of customers. Um, And there's there's a number of different ways that things that I mean by that. But for the simplicity of this discussion, I'm going to talk about it in the context of price increase. Say you have a customer that does uh, $20 million a year and they're negative $2 million in, in profit. Well, if you give them just through a price increase, 
something to get them equal to just break even, not even profitable, but just break even. You have just filled up with really no incremental effort, theoretically, um, $2 million of that $10 million gap. Now, a lot of times people are like, wait, we don't have to go out and buy, we don't have any CapEx. We don't have to go out and get new customers. We, you know, we, we don't need to do all this other stuff. And it's like, no, that's exactly it. Like take care. It's the idea of take care of what you've got first before you go out and do that. Now, the reason why I say that, and again, I understand that's going up to bring it back is to the idea of that and analytics can be an, if you have the clarity on where you're trying to go, you understand what you're currently doing. This is where if you've got the business perspective, you can look and say, you know what? I think that there's an opportunity here and here, and here's why. And then what you can do is when you bring it, this is a technique I use all the time is saying, we got a, we got $10 million bogey. This is a real story. $10 million bogey. We've got $5 million in freight recovery that we're not recovering that if we just go and collect on it, we've got 5 million bucks of our, and then leaders are like, it's a piece of cake low risk <laughs> we're owed it anyway and that's how yeah. you get people all here's the thing i'm telling you all you need is one of those and people are like what else do you got what yeah. what else should we be doing what else should we be looking at it's not saying it's a panacea but it it, it opens their yeah. mind and then they start yeah. to embrace the process and that's the seed for culture because now you've yeah. got people in decision making uh positions that are like we need to work with those guys because they're going to help us do our jobs better. And it doesn't always work out perfectly like that, right? But, uh-huh. you know, the idea is is that the culture piece, in my mind, starts with that fundamental understanding. Because if you do not have that in my mind, uh-huh. you're, you're, throwing, you're throwing darts blindfolded. Yeah. And sure, you, uh, you might hit the bullseye. Uh, people miss it. I, it it's, you know, what you say like that, the context is clear as day. But people still... I'll miss it. Completely miss it. Um, and, you know, when you look at the people that, that have worked with you, for example, um, and they do do that and they do it very well with you guys, uh, mm-hmm. what's the sort of most successful use case that you've seen that you've been part of that you're, you're thrilled to have uh, helped them with? What's, what's the best one you've seen? Yeah, there's 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 a lot of them, but uh, I'd say the most of them come down to to sales growth. Like I can't name anybody in particular, um, yeah, yeah, but for yeah. us, the one the one we always lead off with, mm. because most of our this was in when I was in corporate America, and also now with Strategy Titan is it's revenue growth and market share growth, mm. and a lot of times it's fundamental blocking and tackling around sales analytics, pipeline yeah. management, price management. The reason why I like sales analytics so much is that when you build a quality sales analytics platform, it has mm-hmm. natural extensions into so many other things, mm-hmm. um, specifically around price management. If you develop a sales analytics platform, right, it, it's a very short hop to get to a quality pricing analytics. And the thing is, is that from having implemented these things across multiple businesses, we've got a very good idea of like really good best practices that are pretty universal. We yeah, might have to tweak some things, but the thing is, is that a lot of times, here's the idea. You've got companies that want share growth or revenue growth, right? A lot of times they they need to do, they need to make that happen through hunting, right? There's your farmer community, which just harvests per an accounts and just keeps them running. But a lot of times for growth, you need a hunter. Now for hunters, uh, complex animals, I'm a hunter myself right now with what we do, uh, uh-huh. but you, you need to be out prospecting, right? It, it's, it's a numbers game. A lot of times you, you just need to be prospecting and talking to customers. So imagine if you're a hunter and you're spending five hours a month putting together reports or doing something to prepare for monthly meetings or whatever it is, uh-huh. extremely real situations. So what uh-huh. I say is a lot of times we'll go to the biggest naysayer or their executives. It's like, okay, you've got a growth goal. You want to grow X percent. That growth is dependent upon mostly your plan is to come from new accounts. In order to do that, your hunters need to be out selling, not creating reports. So if we do the sales analytics, not only is it going to help your total sales team perform better and bring better clarity to what's going on within your markets and drivers and things like that, we're going to free up time, five hours a month, just in this example, for your hunters to be out now prospecting, selling more, doing things that are actually going to move you towards your goal. Because guess what? Your guys add zero value. You don't bring them here to create reports. You bring them here to sell, to land new accounts, to make things like that happen. Now, that's a sales example, but that applies to a ton of areas in the business, right? 
Yeah. And, and so it gets to the idea of of value. And this is where, this is why I am so passionate about if you understand what the business is trying to do, you don't have to be an expert in the mm. business, mm. but you mm. got to have a sense of what matters to them because then you can take those points. Just as we talked about here, I'm not talking about analytics for the sake of analytics. They could care less. Mm. Talk about how the analytics and data and all that in the process is going to free them up to benefit their lives either directly or indirectly and or accomplish their goals. So that's a very common narrative that we hear that I've seen a lot in our, in our, in my life. You know, I mean, yeah. I use the sales example because we've helped six, 700 sales reps through this process. And the great thing is, is when you see the mm. biggest naysayer, what puts a smile on my face is the person at first that's like, I hate this stuff. I'm never going to do it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then there's a very logical, natural progression. It requires, it requires handholding and, and support. Yeah. They move from hater to their love. And like, I can't imagine my life without this. And that's how I know it works. That's where it's like, again, I never studied yeah. this stuff. I have no formal training, but it's seeing people and hearing people yeah. and talking to your customer. And uh, I apologize. I'm monologuing again because I'm getting amped up. No, it's great, great to hear. And you know, I'm, I'm uh, a firm believer of uh, that. Yeah, that the, the change that you're looking for. Yeah, ten ten percent is technology. Nine ninety percent is the change. And you know, one of my blueprints is about understanding the business, uh, getting to the pain points, knowing the pain that people. What keep people awake? Those people that are doing the jobs. Those salespeople that are process and doing this. What aren't they doing? It's a bit like in police, and when we have the chat. You want your yeah. cops to go out and protect people. You want them to go out and be proactive to prevent things from happening. You don't want them in there churning data for reports and all the other stuff. So absolutely. And I think it's a parallel across all industries. Um, and I think uh, that message that you give around understanding your business, getting your technology people to understand your business as well is, yeah. is you know, it's right on the money. And that's why, you know, that's why you, you're seeing the success that you are, I think. But, but I've got to ask. I've got to ask, is that oh, I've got built the tension there, didn't I? Oh, I like that. Ooh, built the tension. <laughs> Has anything gone wrong? Is there anything you've seen you think, uh, obviously no names, but is there anything you've seen where you thought, do you know what? We can learn from this. This really didn't go so well. Because you know, quite oh. often it's it's about learning from the things that don't go quite so well, isn't it? So yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I I uh, I joke all the time that the only reason that I know anything now. It's just yeah. because of all the mess ups. And this yeah. is why I share my knowledge is that I understand that in this realm, it, it can be extremely frustrating to put forth great solutions that you know can help the business in some way, shape or form. But there's mm -hmm. that gap, right? I, I talk about it all the time and I'm not the first. There's a lot of people that have talked about this gap, but it's very real. And a lot of times, I, it might appear that I'm being hard on my my uh, friends in the data and analytics community, but it's coming from a place of passion and wanting yeah. to see them do better, saying, guys and gals, we've got immense capabilities, but we stink in general at communicating about why. Yeah. And if we, if we don't do our part, right, because it's very easy to cast the stone across the other side, well, yeah, you business guys should be more data literate. Absolutely, you're 100% correct. But that's 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 the cop out. Mm. You got to uh, yeah. re any relationship takes two. So this is why I talk about how we need to work on our communication skills and the business needs to work on their data literacy to meet in the middle. But now to bring it back to the idea of lessons learned, I share a lot of my stories and experiences in the spirit of trying to help others in the community not have to make the same mistakes that I did. Uh, because yeah. I, I made a, I made a ton of mistakes. I mean, early on in my career, career, it was inferring that this stuff was self apparent, and if you didn't get it, you know, what are you even doing in a leadership position? But then, then it was like, you know, you you go through these situations, and and you know, I try to pay attention to, um, uh -huh. you know, somebody in accounting was trying to explain something to me, and I'm like, listen, man, I I, I I'm not an accountant, I don't get this. And like for me, that was where it clicked. I was like, holy holy cow. This is like the situation reversed. And I was like, okay, this is the empathetic lens to understand yeah. who you're talking to and wh where they're coming from. You don't have to agree with it, but you got to put forth the effort. And so for me, I don't have any one in particular, but it's just the culmination of just all these different yeah. things where, you know, you, 
that, and that's it. That's it. Is that, is that? And the thing is, is I wouldn't trade those experiences uh, for the world because I think that they are extremely valuable. Assuming we learn from them, if we keep making those same mistakes over and over and over, yeah. that's a problem. And that's where I, I try to share these stories to say, like, you know, it's like reading a book. You can, as I say, Michael Jordan, you can read about Michael Jordan shooting a book. You're never going to shoot like Jordan, but you need to get out there and try and do it your way. And that's where yeah. kind of in sharing my ideas, it's to inspire people, to get people to think yeah. differently. That's really the core idea. So that when they come yeah. across a situation, it's like, oh, I remember hearing about this from Jason or Sean or whoever it was. And then maybe they've got like a different lens to consider the situation through because with all of this, it's really about the lens that you look at thing mindset, because ultimately those are, that's the impetus for culture change in my mind. And that's what makes all this stuff successful. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you're doing it your way. It's got to be, it's got to be a song there somewhere, isn't it? At some point, but uh, you said you're definitely doing it your way. And, uh, so what, what I think folks will be interested in uh, Jason is uh, what's next. What's what is the way? Where where are you and Strategy Titan going? What have we got to look forward to, my friend? Absolutely. So yeah, so we've been doing our advisory uh, consulting side of things for a while. We've got an RV retail forecast product, which is 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 extremely specific. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 going really well. I'm very happy with yeah. it. We we found a yeah. very significant market need. But uh, really, what's next for us is we're creating an online learning platform to talk about a lot of these topics and walk people through a logical nice. rational progression of you know base uh data skills that you, that you yeah. need because who we're making it for really is business experts that are looking to come into the data and analytics space because we're a firm believer that those are the people that are going to have the greatest impact to bridge the gap because they're already in the business they're already doing the things that need to be done they just need a little bit of help along the data and analytics side of the equation so we're creating uh, again leveraging a lot of the techniques and mindsets that we've um, we've talked about mm-hmm. here we talk about on linkedin is creating that educational platform to walk people through kind of that entry level and then you know mm-hmm. the, the mid level where it's more communication and people based and then we're also working on an executive level uh content package around these exact topics because one of the things we do do a lot of uh is we advise leaders that are looking to create not just a data strategy or an mm-hmm. analytics strategy but is how does that stuff actually integrate all the things we talked about before integrate into helping you accomplish your results. Because as I tell them, I go, here's the thing you got to consider. You're about to make an extremely significant investment in just the, the, the vision that you've had here. You've got to have crystal clarity, not some theory. Well, if you build the data model like this or your data strategy like this, this is how it will unfold. You need tangible, real world uh, and practical examples of how this is going to play out. But more importantly, how are you going to support it? And the thing is, is I do believe that these things are teachable. They're not easy to teach, right? It's 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 hard, but that's where we feel that, you know what? Uh, what worthwhile is easy? So we're going to take on the challenge. Ah, oh, and do you know what? I have absolutely no doubt you're going to nail the challenge. Um, <laughs> and uh, I have no doubt, and, and hopefully get you back on again and we'll, we'll chat about uh, the impact it's had in the world. But um, so, I mean, Jason, uh, there's absolute wealth of knowledge there insights uh wisdom you know the list goes on for people today and i really appreciate uh you coming on i hope my time on the 100 meters didn't disappoint very um, solid very solid no, good 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 i know there's room for improvement and i know you're, you can be quite harsh and i'm sure you'll be telling me this but um <laughs> but uh i have uh, also spoke to the queen uh, and she said she's gonna put up a, a room in buckingham palace for you when you when you arrive um so no problems as long as you give the give the palace a little bit of uh, free, free, you know, strategy Tyson's time. So you know, yeah, she needs to have a look what you do. What, where, where, where will she go to find the information, Jason? Yeah, absolutely. She, yeah. she can learn more about us at uh, strategytitan.com. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we've got everything there. Yeah. Uh, in addition, I would suggest to her that she follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, I think yeah. she might be already. So, you know, it's just, you know, send me a connection Could request. Be. Could be. Yeah. 
Um, and that's really for me where, where I choose to spend a lot of my time just because it's a great community there. Uh, we can engage. In addition, um, if you haven't already and you're interested in kind of the training content, um, strategytitan.com slash training, you can join our community there. Uh, we've got a great sample data set, real world data set that, that takes um, mm -hmm. uh, sales data. And basically, it's like this is what that in the real world looks like. That's something that I felt was a major gap. And you've got your Titanic data set and all this other stuff. But Let's get something that's actually business focused in the hands of people so that they can put yeah. it to use. Go there, download that, play with it. It's there. It's available. You don't even have to sign up for our newsletter. It's there. Just go get it, play with it. But ultimately, I would encourage you that um, if you're not following me, give it a follow. Not because uh, you know I'm the, I'm the best data and analytics guy in the world, but I will challenge you to think differently and alter your lens of the world to consider things yeah. that are maybe outside of the bounds of what you currently look at. And the thing is, is uh, you know, an expanded mind is an exceptionally powerful thing. And it's also quite a kind of a rarity these days. You know? Yeah. Oh, love it. Uh, it's a great way to end. Uh, and, and you did hear it here. The queen follows Jason Krantz. So there you go. <laughs> I believe hey, that. Have you CBN or whatever it's Fox News, isn't it tonight? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I appreciate you having me. It's always a good, uh, always a good conversation with you, and uh, uh, I already know that you're going to make it a great day. <laughs> I've already made it a great day. So, <laughs> <laughs> but no, thank anyway, you very so, much. Yeah, thanks. So, I'm, I'm going to stop the recording now, and uh, just give me two secs. I want to make sure I don't lose the recording. Uh, otherwise, we'll just have to do it again. Yeah. yeah right. Seriously.